Hello fellow sharks, Sinus here, and welcome back to another What's New with Thunderbreaker. The ignition patch has arrived, and I'll be covering all the details surrounding Thunderbreaker. Do note that this patch is new to GMS, so certain exclusive tech is still being discovered as we speak. I hope to put out a more detailed Thunderbreaker Bible in the future, but for now I hope this suffices. I encourage all aspiring Thunderbreakers to join our Discord for further information. And without further ado, let's begin the overview. First off, I want to say the GMS patch notes are absolute dog shit. I really do miss Ghibli, as these are a sad excuse for patch notes. I just want to get that out of the way, as I've had to essentially make the majority of the visuals for this video due to how vague the patch notes are regarding our skill balancing. This is the Cygnus Remaster, but I want to preface this overview with the idea that this patch is not nearly as massive as Destiny was. Do not get me wrong, there were a really, really, really good amount of improvements and changes made to our class, but nothing nearly as significant or game-changing or playstyling altering like the title crash animation cancel chains we received in Destiny. We'll be covering Thunderbreaker skills starting from first job, but I do want to address some general changes. Overall, Thunderbreaker received numerous animation changes across most skills, but that doesn't mean these skills were altered in functionality. In terms of functionality, cancelling skills in air by using Tidal Crash no longer works, except for one skill. And despite what the GMS patch notes say, the only skill that can have its end lag cancelled via Tidal Crash in air is Thunderbolt. This does not mean Tidal Crash is no longer an animation cancelled by itself, but Tidal Crash had a unique effect where it could cancel the end lag of certain skills by being used in air. I cannot stress enough that this required you to be in air for this function to work. And again, this function only exists for Thunderbolt as of ignition. Most other skills still function the same, it's just that numbers have been moved around or shifted. Uh, overall, it's a damage increase. Lightning Elemental, for example, still functions the same, but the numbers were tweaked. I will only cover the fully unlocked Lightning Elemental once we get to the fourth job. For first and second job, we saw one critical change in functionality. Flash, the TP skill that can lock onto mobs or set, send you a set distance depending on if a mob is in range, can no longer be linked with Tidal Crash to cover ground incredibly quickly. Flash will now be put in the skill queue when pressed and when Tidal Crash finishes its animation, Flash will be activated. For those who want a bit more of an in-depth explanation, Thunderbreaker has a unique skill linking system. This system functions by encouraging the alteration of skill uses. This is accomplished by, unfortunately, penalizing the player by increasing the cast delay or cast animation between attacks if the skill is the exact same. For example, using the skill Thunderbolt and then using the skill Thunderbolt again is actually slower than casting Thunderbolt, Lightning Punch, Thunderbolt, all in quick succession. The Tidal Crash Flash trick functioned by using Tidal Crash and getting its travel distance out, blinking but not casting Flash to allow an immediate use of Tidal Crash again. It's why Tidal Crash into Tidal Crash is so abysmally slow, but using Tidal Crash into any other skill than Tidal Crash again is leagues faster. You could argue that there is a hidden cooldown in between skill uses, but that isn't really the full picture of how this linking system works. In either case, you can no longer traverse maps by using this skill duo due to Flash activating after the previous skill use has completed. It is not inter- it doesn't interrupt anymore. It fully casts Flash. In addition to those changes, Second Job also saw our weapon booster become completely passive. Alongside becoming passive, it grants 20 additional strength at max level. Second Job also saw the introduction of a new skill, known as Sea Wave. This skill was originally marketed or demonstrated as a mobbing tool, but due to the fact it has a 12 second cooldown and is unaffected by traditional cooldown reduction sources such as the Mercedes Legion effect or hat potentials, its mobbing use is rather underwhelming considering mobbing mob spawn waves have a 7.5 second delay. The skill is still great, don't get me wrong, but it's not reliable for every mob spawn wave. Sea Wave also seems to be server-dependent in some format, as you can spawn multiple Sea Waves in one activation. At this current point in time, and at the time of recording, it is not known if the additional Sea Waves that are activated do actual damage or what is known as ghost damage. 
In third job, a core skill, Link Mastery's functionality was changed. Prior to Ignition, it granted a hidden, quote-unquote, 20% final damage boost to linked attacks. Unfortunately, due to it being on a linked attack, your first attack when you were initially starting to attack was always weaker compared to any following linked attack. This is because the first attack is obviously not counted as linked. If you watch Thunderbreakers who are really trying to optimize prior to this patch in Ignition, you'll often see, often see them start their combo with a short cast animation skill such as Lightning Punch before starting to use their main combo or harder hitting attacks. Linked Mastery now grants a buff of 6% final damage, and this buff can stack up to 3 times for a total of 18% final damage at max. This overall final damage from this skill is lower, but its minor de decrease is made up for having the buff essentially permanent in both bossing and mobbing situations. Fourth job sees some great quality of life improvements, as the skill Arc Charger, otherwise known as Thunderbreaker's Shadow Partner, is now a toggle skill. A quick tip that I highly recommend is putting Lightning Elemental and Arc Charger in an in-game macro so you can press one skill to activate both skills via one key. Do note that macros can be interrupted by giving another input while you're activating the two toggles. So what I recommend is you stand still, press the macro key, wait till both skills are toggled on, and then you can start doing whatever. Now, as mentioned prior, I'm going to cover Lightning Elemental. Lightning Elemental still has the same general function as before. You can have five stacks max, and so on and so forth. It allows you to use Typhoon and certain other skills. In addition to that, 3% damage per stack is now a function of the skill, so you can get 15% damage from having max stacks. The function of gaining 9% IED per stack remains, so when you are fully stacked, you'll also have 45% IED. You no longer need to wait until you have Primal Bolt for that passive effect to trigger. Because of this, the main difference is how Primal Bolt and Typhoon now function and interact with the rest of Thunderbreaker's kit. So, prior to Ignition, Typhoon used to have a buff that was granted to you, and it would grant a whopping 7% damage buff multiplied by the amount of lightning stacks it consumed. This totaled to a 35% damage buff if consuming the max maximum of five lightning stacks. After ignition, it only grants 3% damage per stack for a total of 15% damage when consuming max stacks. The 20% damage that has been lost has been placed elsewhere in Thunderbreaker's kit, such as the 15% damage gained from just having max lightning stacks. Typhoon also has the additional effect of gaining 100% P damage when used at max stacks, meaning the skill has an attack power of 420% damage when at maximum power and lightning stacks. So because of that trait, it's going to lead us into our hyper skills. So without any delay, Primal Bolt is finally relevant again. It's been stripped of its 20% passive final damage bonus, but it is now strictly a burst buff because of that. It lasts 30 seconds, and for those 30 seconds, you cannot lose lightning elemental stacks through uh, consumption of via skills. In addition, when Primal Bolt is active, each lightning stack grants 10% IED and 4% damage when Primal Bolt is active. This comes to a whopping 50% IED and 20% damage when fully stacked. These benefits do not combine with the base benefits of lightning stacks. Meaning, your 45% IED and 15% damage just becomes 50% IED and 20% damage. They are not added together. In addition to what I've mentioned, Typhoon will not have a cooldown during the active time, and when you're linking attacks, you can reduce the cooldown of certain skills, such as Sea Wave, Shark Torpedo, and Lightning God Spear Strike when linking attacks. So, due to the relevancy of Primal Bolt and, by extension, Typhoon, our hyper passives have changed. Our best in slot bossing hyper passives are as follow. It is known as 212 or Gale Reinforce, Gale Extra Strike, Thunderbolt Extra Strike, Annihilate Reinforce, Annihilate Boss Russ. This is assuming you are optimizing for burst, and even though Thunderbreaker is a king of DPM, this build seems to be the best setup for the general purpose bossing. And last but not least, for 5th job, a few things have been altered. Namely, Lightning Cascade finally lines up with our 2-minute burst, as it has a cooldown of 120 seconds at level 30. 
The duration of the skill has been extended due to increasing the cooldown from 105 seconds to 120 seconds. In addition, Shark Torpedo has a better hitbox, and as mentioned, its cooldown can be reduced when linking attacks while Primal Bolt is active. Lightning God Spear Strike also has the ability to be manually activated, but by default, it will no longer trigger automatically. You need to set it to trigger automatically by right-clicking the skill in the skill window. Don't be me and forget it for over half of your GPQ before an actual Thunderbreaker main tells you how to play your class. I'm not really going to go into general changes or general overviews of the patch. Uh, the only other thing I really want to mention is hyper skills are now affected by cooldown reduction. So cool. You're not waiting a harsh two minutes for uh, Glory of the Guardians or Primal Bolt. It's going to be cooldown reduced. So you're always syncing up with your the rest of your two minute cooldowns. Uh, but other than that, that's the patch. It's There's a lot of numbers moved around, but overall we got a damage increase. The class is going to take some time to get used to because it does feel a little weird at times, especially with the removal of the flash and title crash trick. There are some horizontal momentum movement abilities that have been hindered because of that. Again, it's like the second day of the patch, third day of the patch. Uh, I don't know when this vehicle will actually be up. But tech and exclusive delays, or not exclusive delays, but exclusive tech that is for GMS has still yet to be discovered if it even exists. And we're still learning more about the class day by day, hour by hour, even at this point in time. If anything else comes up, I'll be sure to update you. But until then, that's all I have for you, Sharks. I really hope you all enjoy the Ignition patch. I'm looking forward to my class, and I, I've been enjoying it to the best of my ability. It's been a lot of fun, not nearly as quote unquote overwhelming as the Destiny patch was, but still very, it's a patch. <laughs> it's a patch, it's, a, it's one of the all time patches. Thank you for watching and I will see you sharks later. Bye bye.